When my dad killed himself, nobody said anything to me um, about what happened. I overheard conversations. Um, I overheard the conversation my mother had with my aunt on the morning we got the call that my dad was in the hospital. I heard the word pills. I heard hospital. I just knew. Um, I don't know how I knew, but I knew that he had taken the pills. Um, and then he died three days later. Because they told me he died of pneumonia, I knew they were lying. And that meant to me that what happened was something to be embarrassed about. So I never told anyone that he killed himself. I never told anyone that he died. I went back to school uh, on the following Monday. I took one day off. And no one knew what happened except one of my friends. And I remember years later, one of my friends said, gee, I haven't heard anything about your dad in a long time. How is he doing? And I realized I'd never told him that my dad was dead. And I certainly never told him that my dad had killed himself. Why Suicide is a basic question and answer book that covers every aspect of suicide, from what is suicide to what is it like for people who've been through the suicide of a loved one. In the aftermath of a suicide of a loved one or someone who's close to you, you inevitably feel an, uh, an unbelievable range of emotions, from the usual experience of grief that you would have in, uh, in dealing with the, death of, the sudden death of anyone, but also anger, resentment, um, uh, embarrassment. There's all kinds of stigma around suicide also, so people don't know exactly what to say and what other people will think of them. So it's a very complicated experience. Often people are afraid to tell ch children the truth. But children generally don't complain about being told the truth. What they complain about is being lied to. They feel that you don't trust them. So when I speak with people who have children who are dealing with this issue of suicide in their families, I always say, explain it. Explain it in an age-appropriate way, but explain it. If you lie to your child, it's going to come back and haunt you. I wrote this book with both my 12-year-old self in mind and my 90-year-old grandmother in mind. I wanted this to be a book that virtually anybody could read from age 12 up. It's very clear, very straightforward. The focus, though, is on the experience of people who've lived through the suicide of someone they know, a loved one. Um, so I, I really was, was aiming for a broad audience, for anybody who needed help and advice in this area. When someone's been through the experience of a suicide or attempted suicide in their lives with somebody who's close to them, they generally have lots of questions, um, and they seek out different resources. For anyone who's had this experience, I think it's important to learn about the subject, and my book is an ideal resource to learn all the basic information you need to know about the subject. It's also important to seek out professional help whether it's a psychologist or a psychiatrist or another mental health professional. It's been 40 years since my father's suicide. I feel a lot better. But I've also had some great help with a wonderful therapist. It required help. I couldn't do it on my own.